Okay, we begin with what appears to be another instance of quid pro quo by President Trump. There's a lot to get to, so we're just diving in. It's the same issue that got him impeached in the first place. Before a meeting with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo yesterday, President Trump put out a tweet that appeared to link his administration's decision to freeze New York's access to the trusted traveler program with a demand that the state drop a myriad of lawsuits against him and his administration. It's just doing it in plain sight. Why not, right? He wrote this. I'm seeing Governor Cuomo today at the White House, and he must understand that national security far exceeds politics. New York must stop all of its unnecessary lawsuits and harassment, start cleaning itself up, and lowering taxes. Yeah. New York's Attorney General, Letitia James, has issued a subpoena for Trump's financial records and has filed a number of lawsuits against the Trump administration and the Trump organization. She responded to the president's tweet, writing, when you stop violating the rights and liberties of all New Yorkers, we will stand down. Until then, we have a duty and responsibility to defend the Constitution and the rule of law. By the way, I file the lawsuits, not the governor. Gosh, I'm just wondering. It's just so weird what we see happening here. I wonder if anyone could have seen this coming. Q House impeachment manager Hakeem Jeffries from just two weeks ago. What we have alleged in this case is that the president solicited a personal political benefit in exchange for an official act. Solicited dirt on a political opponent in exchange for the release of $391 million in military aid, solicited dirt in exchange for a White House meeting. And if this Senate were to say that's acceptable, then precisely as was outlined in that question could take place all across America in the context of the next election and any election. Grants allocated to cities or towns or municipalities across the country. But the president could say, you're not going to get that money, Mr. Mayor, Mrs. County Executive, Mrs. Town Supervisor, unless you endorse me for re-election. The president could say that to any governor of our 50 states. That's unacceptable. That cannot be allowed to happen in our democratic republic. Chuck Rosenberg, it seemed so ludicrous when Hakeem Jeffries made that example of what potentially could happen. And yet, as of yesterday, it has. What's the recourse? What's your take moving forward? Well, first of all, uh, you know, it's not that hard to predict that the president will be illogical and petulant, uh, Mika. And by the way, I don't know if you can put his tweet back up, mm -hmm. but there is an, a, a rank inconsistency within it. First, he says that national security is much more important than politics. And in the very next sentence, there's the rank politics, right? In the very next sentence, after talking about the primacy of national security, there comes the threat. If he doesn't get what he wants, a cessation uh, to the lawsuits that have been filed against him and his organizations by New York State, then he's going to exact revenge. Uh, Mr. Jeffries was spot on. Mm -hmm. I give him some credit for that. Uh, but this has been a pattern that we have seen over and over and over again, and I think it's deeply disturbing. So, Jonathan Lemire, uh, so much has happened. Uh, we started with this. There are many other things that happened yesterday that we could have started with given the attorney general's comments later in the day, which we'll get to. But um, we've got a situation now where the government, uh, president's appearing to be issuing quid pro quos in real time on Twitter. Um, what are you hearing from the White House and from your sources in Washington? Yeah, I mean, he's doing so in plain sight. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's very little attempt to cover this. Now, we know that the president has had sort of a, a pretty contentious relationship with Governor Cuomo and most of the New York state officials uh, in the because most of them are Democrat. And of course, there have been a series of, of investigations that the state has run in addition to what's been going on in the, in the House of Representatives. Uh, so that is something that the, the president has been irritated about for a while. Let's recall, of course, he even uh, sort of renounced his citizenship of the state of New York and is now a, considered a citizen of Florida, uh, in part because of how upset he was with how things were going on uh, with those officials. 
Now, what he's happening here is is exactly what Representative Jeffries implied. This mm -hmm. seems to be a quid pro quo offer right in front. This, he took away this this program, the Global Entry Program, a few weeks ago. He's now suggesting he's trying to put it back on the table if these investigations stop and he gets a cheap shot at the governor's brother while he's at it. Now, the governor, there was no deal struck yesterday from what we've heard. Uh, certainly, Letitia James, the attorney general here in New York, is the one who spoke out forcefully against it. Uh, but this is also a window into how the president's feeling right now, post-impeachment, yeah. completely emboldened, unchecked. We we saw what's happened in the few days after that verdict. Lieutenant Colonel Vindman marched out of the White House yeah. in front of the camera so people could see. Ambassador Sodland also relieved of his duties. You know, he's weighed in on the Roger Stone sentencing, which I know we'll get to a little more in a moment. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. He has told people around him, as we've written this week, that he feels like not only did he survive impeachment, but he's come out stronger than ever because no one in the Republican Party except for Mitt Romney, mm -hmm. dared stand up to him. So we've seen a pattern here, uh, and Michael Steele, uh, it, it, it's the president can't take a win. He can't take a win when he's gotten his way, when he's gotten through something. He can't take a win. Right. He actually doubled down, doubles down and gets worse, um, which leads me to Susan Collins, I believe, saying, well, I believe the president has learned a lesson? <laughs> well, no, he's doing no. it again in plain sight. The Republicans own this, but it, d do they care? No, they don't. And, and, and you know, large measure because, uh, you know, they've saddled up with the president in terms of, you know, the, the, the way all of these things play out. You know, on the first part of this, you know, you get on the other side of impeachment and what you see is the president now wanting to exact his his revenge. He doesn't he wants to settle the score. This is mm -hmm. not over until he says it's over, until he feels that he's made his point. Um, after those who you know perceive as come after him have you know have done so, so you have that Republicans still sit there uh, stymied by the whole thing. Where you have a Susan Collins telling us, "Oh well, you know he's going to learn from this." The president doesn't learn anything uh, from these uh, exercises as, as he sees them. He sets his own course. Um, so uh, you know, as I've said before, the important thing, Mika, is is what do we learn from it? Yeah. What do we get away from this? Because that's the important part of this. We know Trump is not going to learn anything because he doesn't want to. I mean, he set his course, his mind in a certain direction. So what are we taking away from this? And what will be our next move as government, as citizens, um, as the state of New York? Uh, and, and, and how do we now uh, adapt on this uh, playing field, if you will, to what the president is doing with the with the you know the perp walks of of career uh, soldiers uh, yeah. from from service, et cetera. All right. Well